folks, welcome back. Um, so tonight we're going to talk about uh, the RV, which is the, I mean, the RV that I'm in. Uh, it is a 2014, I forget, 36 foot fifth wheel. Then we're also going to talk about the Sunline um, 1661. Then we're going to talk about the Casita, and we're going to talk about the Prius. Okay, so let's start off with the Sunline. The Sunline had a solar setup. Um, I've removed the whole entire solar setup and I have it disassembled in the garage here. And my plan with that is to basically divide the two panels between the Prius and the Casita. I'll get back to how I'm going to do it and why I'm going to do it and the whole um, explanation of that. So the Sunline also, I, you know, I went through and cleaned everything out, took things that um, I felt would be, you know, something that I could use in the Casita. There are some things that I could use in the RV and th some things I can sell. So I'm going to be trying to sell um, a bunch of things and kind of uh, minimize my clutter, which I have a lot of. Um, I need to start learning how to live on less uh, or with less. I have so much junk that I don't even use and I, don't, I wasted my money spending on it. So, um, you know, I have to kind of get into the more minimalist mindset and I'm working on that. Uh, the Sunline is out front and people have been stopping and, and asking how much and, and you know things like that. I can't sell it yet because I haven't gotten the title back from the state yet. When I get the title back, I will sell it. I'm going to ask $2,000 for it. The inside has been pretty much, it's not complete, but it's been pretty, re, pretty nicely redone. Um, it's in great shape. Looks really good. And I will, uh, so I'll sell that. Then I will move on to the next step, which is the, um, the Casita. The Casita I wanted to bring down to Florida this summer and leave it there, which I hope maybe I still will be able to do. Um, but unfortunately, I mean, camp is opening this summer and, uh, you might remember last year uh, how disappointed I was. The camp wasn't, we weren't having camp. Um, so I really would like to work camp this year. And that starts like on the 20th of June and goes through to the 20 something of August. And um, it's great for me because I get to be a nurse again. Um, right now, what I'm doing with work is one-to-one -one instruction for an autistic student. And that's really great, and it's wonderful, and I really love it, and I enjoy it. But I get paid so little that I can't even live on it. It's not even close to livable um, salary, which is pretty typical for any kind of service uh, job like that. Any, any kind of human service job is just really sad anyway so and I've worked that industry I mean worked that I've worked in the human services field all my life basically you know um, so anyhow so what we're gonna do is I'm um, gonna set up a roof rack on the Toyota Tacoma and on the roof rack I am gonna put the one solar panel from the two that were on the the Sunline and I am going to then set up the um, in the bed the um, 
charge controller and the and a battery and then utilize that for electricity in the casita so I can be you know anywhere I could park anywhere I could be anywhere for the night and and enjoy a movie or, or enjoy whatever uh, the fan blowing the lights you know all different things like that um, and so there's been a lot of I've been thinking about how to do it and everything so I'm gonna put a, a roof rack on the cab of the I mean on yeah on the cab of the the uh, Tacoma uh, so far unless I can find a cap that fits and is in decent shape and I can put a um, roof rack on that and put the put the uh, solar panel on that and then um, the same thing I'm gonna I there's two ways of going about it one is to actually wire it into the truck and then plug the um, the camper into the truck the second is to set up the whole thing and um, have the solar cables lead out to the camper and go directly from the panel and the charge controller and the battery into the battery of the camper so I think that's probably the way we're gonna go it's the easiest way but that turns out to be the opposite of how we're going to go with the um, Prius camper. So I know I have too many campers already, <laughs> but I'm going to convert, I'm going to continue and finish converting the Prius C into a camper. And the great part about the Prius C is that it is its own uh, solar generator, basically, it's its own generator um, because it it constantly charges the batteries back up you could use the air conditioning all night and the estimates are like less than a gallon of gas to do that to to run all night long with the air conditioning so it's climate controlled inside it it, it works um, through electricity instead of uh, through the motor so the concept there is that the solar panel would be hooked directly to the battery, the 12 volt battery, and be charging through that. And a converter would be connected out from the battery, and then I would be able to utilize that electricity for things like um, a little uh, travel fridge or a little, um, I have a toaster oven, travel fridge, uh, Instapot, things like that to like cook or whatever the other complicated issues are figuring out a bathroom and how to use use a bathroom in a in a in a tiny Prius C now I'm not sure if everybody understands when I say Prius I don't mean the regular size Prius a Prius C is very small it's about the size of a Yaris if you know what a Yaris is um, Toyota Yaris so it's a much smaller little hatchback um, and it's a full hatchback. The whole back is the hatch. Just like, you know, the real old time hatchbacks. I also have, um, the tent that actually, you know, connects to the back of the, the, uh, Toyota Prius. So, um, I did show that in a video. I put it on last year when I got it. I haven't done anything with it yet because I want to do this conversion. I want to put a bed in on the passenger side. I want to remove the passenger side seat and the back seat. Um, be able to put my storage cabinets in. Um, I wanted to set up a panel with the charge controller that could be easily connected or disconnected so that it could be brought over to the truck when I decide to go camping with the with this casita why waste money on two converters or yeah two charge controllers and double everything when i could just i already have two six volt batteries which will go into the prius 
um, and I can charge those and then they are connected to the, the regular 12 volt battery. Oh no, I don't know if I can do that. Thought about that. Well, we're going to see. I'm not sure exactly what I can do, but um, we're going to definitely uh, make it so that the um, solar panels can help charge the batteries enough that um, I could go through the night with a lot less than a gallon of gas because the uh, charged batteries will also assist. And um, so, you know, like when it's a climate control thing, the AC will run until it's cool enough. It has like a thermostat almost like your home. You set it to a temperature just like at, at your home instead of a little dot, cold or hot. It actually has the degree and so I'll set it at that and you know it'll turn off and turn on the uh, compressor when needed um, when the battery runs down uh, so if I have all this extra battery life it'll last a lot longer but when it does run down the engine kicks on for a few minutes or whatever it may be and then and that charges the battery back up real fast, rapidly. And then it kicks off again for a while. And see, this is how some people, and and since it's such a tiny little Prius, it cools off faster, I, I believe. And um, so I think that I'll do a little bit better um, with the cost or, the, or what it takes to keep it cool during the night. Um, when it comes to the heat, that's uh, also that's a little bit more power needed actually from what I've from what I've seen on TV and what I've on YouTube and everything so um, but you know hopefully I won't even be somewhere where I'm gonna have to have heat hopefully I'll be where I have to have some cool air and um, I I definitely want to get a, a fridge a small 12 volt fridge but I want to get the Iceco where um, it has a separate freezer and refrigerator area um, because that I feel would work much better for me and then um, so I'll, I'll put that in I'll install that countertop a small countertop to work on um, and I will since I have the little tent area I can you know sit in the back there with my legs out the back hatch which is real cool and um, I could have a lot of fun in it so next let's move on to the casita and talk a little bit more about the casita um, if I go if I decide to get away from New York and this weather I'll have to live in the casita at least six months out of the year because I have an agreement to rent my house in Florida to a couple every season um, for as long as they want to do it. So uh, that means in sometime in November till sometime in May, I will need to be living in the casita. Um, so as we all know, it costs a lot of money to get a campsite down there during the season. So maybe I can do a little bit of like a Florida nomad kind of boondocking situation on the regular. Um, I also got uh, the uh, the I got a subscription to. Um, what is it called again? Hold on, let me get it here and we'll, I'll cut that. What is it called again? Boondocker or something, what is it? Harvest Host. I also got a, I also got a subscription to Harvest Host, which, um, can be a help I think um, you know go to that 
use that a, a couple nights. Uh, use Walmart. Use um, you know the restaurants that allow Cracker Barrel, whatever. Use the sporting goods place that allow you park. So you know, I'll, and any of the you know the public the public land that um, that are free. Uh, use all anything that I can do like that and try to stay away from long-term uh, RV park unless somehow I wind up making so much money that it's you know it's feasible so those that's the plan for that I definitely um, have some things in the casita that I'm going to be working on in the near future, so I'll definitely do videos on those. And I'm definitely going to go through the series of the Prius C and fixing that up and, and getting it um, set up to do camping, um, boondocking, self-sustained kind of uh, thing there. And what else is there? And like I said, I'm selling the uh, the Sunline camper, cute little camper. It's a 1988 Sunline Saturn 1661, and uh, so and people have been stopping constantly, asking how much, how much, and you know, for sale and all that. So hopefully that'll. That'll go pretty pretty quick. I'm hoping for the title soon because it's that time of year where people are looking at that and wanting to get started on something like that. That would all then mean if that decision was made that this RV would also go for go up for sale. There's a lot of stuff that I need to kind of get out of here or sell or get rid of. And I've been seeing how to do um, how to work with uh, eBay and how to work with Facebook marketplace and things like that in the garage I have a washer and dryer that need to go I have um, you know some other items that just need to go um, you know uh, I have a dishwasher here a countertop dishwasher I wish I could use it in the casita, but it's way too big. The, key, the casita is pretty small. Um, yeah, otherwise, I got to get rid of pretty much everything and minimalize everything and get down to, you know, tiny stuff, <laughs> a small amount of stuff. I have a big, huge 52 inch TV that I got on Amazon Day which was a mistake. I thought it was the 42 that was on sale, but it was the 50 or something like 42 or whatever. And it was like 52. It was huge. Um, so, uh, you know, I need to get rid of that. I have electronics, tons of electronics that I need to just sell and get rid of old phones. You know, iPhones are pretty valuable. Even, you know, your old ones that you've let lay around here. I have um, two iPhones and two iPads that I can sell um, at least I think there's a third iPad and a third phone uh, in my mother's house so and there's a lot of stuff in my mother's house that I can sell and get rid of so I'm gonna start working on that also I'm gonna continue with school um, you know it seems like every time we look at my credits I had only like one class to complete when I was in pre-nursing and I would have been done um, with pre if, when I had the four or five nursing classes but that's not the way it worked so now I'm like eight or nine credits out right eight or nine classes out because of changing my major so but I'm working on it I have math this summer and um, American history, I think. Those are the summer. Currently, I'm in counseling, uh, interview and counseling class. So I will be at the 
uh, edge of, you know, human services degree. And then I decide, you know, do I want to go for my bachelor's in social work or do I want to go to the psychology side? Do I want to go to the socio sociology side? So there are some options I have to think about. And do I want to keep going to school? I'm so over school these days. <laughs> I've been doing school, school, school. Um, you know, I really wish the nursing thing had worked out, but, and I, and you know, people say, never say this, but I, I'm done. I'm like, I'm, I just don't have the desire to, to do that at this age. I just feel like I should be enjoying life more. And going back to school for me is not being able to work. So I wouldn't be able to support myself. It would be another disaster just trying to do it. Um, so I'm not going to do that. Yeah, so that's what's going on, folks. Thanks for coming. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for listening to everything that I had to tell you. And I'm going to take you along on the ride as usual. Take care. Bye-bye.